Did this game prove the Vikings made a mistake signing Kirk Cousins? Of course. You said, listen, you know why franchise – the reason Kirk Cousins was available in the middle of his prime just for the money and didn't even reset the market is because he's not a great franchise quarterback. Those guys do not become ever available in the middle of their primes and then don't, get even, don't even reset the market with the contract. That's what, He's a good quarterback. He's a middle of the pack. You want to say he's high middle? Okay. You advanced in the playoffs with Case Keenum last year. You think you're going to do better than that with Kirk Cousins this year? And by the way, I know a lot of the analytics guys may be may roll their eyes at this, but let me give you kind of the dumb mainstream hot takey or big picture low hanging fruit view. OK, look what happened in the game as a microcosm of Kirk Cousins career. Good quarterback, right? They have a chance to tie it up. He throws the interception to bury them. Then once the game is over, they come back, they come back, they come back. And then with a chance to win. He throws the interception that leads to the loss by one score. If he is there as the tipping point in the balance of power, at least in the NFC North, that didn't happen. You just spent all that money on a guy to win a game like this. So you could be 6-3-1, and one, and they could also be 6 three, right? Like, you could be almost in a tie for first place in the division. And at every high-leverage moment, he underperformed. Every single time. And by the way, this has been happening a lot in his career. If you really look at the high leverage moments with Kirk Cousins, you go, ooh, a lot of those numbers were empty calories. Bottom line is they signed him because they thought he put him over the top. He will not put them over the top. Therefore, it's money poorly spent, period. I completely disagree with Max on this one. And here's the reason why. I think Kirk Cousins was a good sign. I don't have any issues with him whatsoever. I got issues with money uh, being accorded like $27, $28 million for guys like him, Matt Stafford, and others that haven't even won a playoff game. I get that argument. But clearly, no one's denying that he was an upgrade from Case Keenum. And on top of it all, the market, he got what the market allows, which is a $28 million a year, $84 million guarantee. We get all of that. I will remind everybody that Kirk Cousins was brought to the Minnesota Vikings because the Minnesota Vikings last season, and Damian, you could co-sign on this, they were number one in points allowed. They were number one in yards allowed. This year, they're 11th, okay, in points allowed and fifth in yards allowed. All I'm saying to you is that their defense has taken a step back. Several weeks ago, before they got on a roll, particularly after they lost to the Los Angeles Rams 38-31, we looked at the Minnesota Vikings, and we saw so many holes in their defense. We said, damn, this is not the same team that they were last year. So we looked at the defense as being problematic because Case, uh, I'm sorry, Kirk Cousins was supposed to arrive to a team that had an elite defense. You knew exactly what you were getting from Kirk Cousins. And I think that's exactly what Kirk Cousins is giving you this year. He gets his numbers. He gives you his numbers. He'll give you his share of touchdowns, completion percentages, and all of that stuff. But you're not relying on him to win you football games. That was supposed to be Minnesota's defense. And even though last night is not the greatest time to make that argument because Kirk Cousins did throw a pick six, at the end of the day, when I look at Minnesota's 5-4-1 record, I'm looking at the fact that their defense has dissipated in terms of its prowess more so than Kirk Cousins is not being that guy. Yeah, listen, I, first of all, I, I got to come on and say I've never been a Kirk Cousins guy because if you look at Kirk Cousins throughout his career, particularly with Washington, he's never had a signature moment. He's never had a signature moment, a signature win where you could just be like, okay, that's that guy. But here's what I will say, okay? Kirk Cousins was in a unique situation as far as being a free agent, so he got what the market determined what he should get. So right. I'm not knocking Kirk Cousins as far as the money is concerned. Neither but what, But – when I look at the Minnesota Vikings, Stephen A., you alluded to this. Their identity is their defense, and they want to run the ball, okay? Last night, they had 22 yards rushing. 22 yards rushing in, in that game last night. And we've talked about all along with the Minnesota Vikings defensively. They have taken a step back on that side of the ball. And, Stephen A., you talked about the numbers. They're not able to – they're not getting after the quarterback like they're supposed to. They're not – in the secondary, they're not covering like they – like they've been accustomed – like we've been accustomed to seeing. So, when you look at the Minnesota Vikings, you can't expect Kirk Cousins, who's never in his career been the guy that really kind of shouldered the load to all of a sudden come into the Minnesota Vikings franchise and be that guy. He is who he is. 
He's a stats guy. Let's just put it out there. He's going yep. to put up good numbers. He's going to, you know, he's going to be an upper echelon guy as far as numbers concerned. But he's not going to be the guy that he's going to shoulder the load and all of a sudden elevate the Minnesota Vikings to this Super Bowl, you know, Super Bowl type team. He did That's have signature. Not... He did have signature moments. He had two signature moments last night, which is in high level. I'm talking moments, about his career. Throwing interceptions. That, I mean, like, we know what it is, Damian, for you to say no signature moments or, or, or then even following your argument, it doesn't make sense to sign him. If he's just a stats guy and you can't rely on him when, the, when, when it counts the most and you have a team ready for win, to win, why are you allocating Behold resources no, to him because, that you can put other because places? Kirk, wait a minute. Because Kirk Cousins is an outlier. Max, he's an outlier. How often does a guy that of Kirk Cousins, you know, his caliber? I'm not saying he's Drew Brees or Tom Brady, but these guys don't hit the market very often. So when a quarterback of Kirk Cousins, you know, his caliber comes along, of course he's going to demand his caliber. His, though. Well, he, but he's going to demand a lot of money. So because you don't have to give it to him. Well, who else are you going to pay? Uh, who, they who, had who, Teddy Bridgewater on the team. Okay, well, no, okay. First of all, as far as Teddy Bridgewater is concerned. Yeah. Everyone wants to play Monday morning quarterback because we've seen him at what he did in the preseason against the New right. York Jets. So everyone wants to say, oh, they had Kurt, they had Teddy Bridgewater on the roster. But if you're the Minnesota Vikings, you watch Teddy Bridgewater through, what, two years, rehab, 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 practice. So no other team really had a better kind of advantage point than the Minnesota Let's Vikings as far as what they thought that Teddy, T Teddy Bridgewater on, could take them. So that's why I have no problem with the Minnesota Vikings paying Kirk Cousins.